Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we are looking at, uh, well, the future of Three Kingdoms post-launch, which uh, I think is always fun to look at. So, Business Practices blog, Three Kingdoms post-launch, and what's next? So, uh, thanks James High for, for writing this for us. As you can imagine, it gets pretty intense around the studio as launch day gets this close, and as you'd expect, Total War Three Kingdoms is a pretty big deal for us. All our releases are, of course, but this is the first new historical era game for us in nearly six years. As you probably know, it's six years, I mean, that's that's mad. I think it's, what, Rome 2 was the last thing that came out? No, Attila, I guess. That was after, right? Anyway, uh, that's mad to think it's so long. It's so long I can't remember what the last one was. So, as you probably know, we have multiple core teams dedicated to multiple projects, and while many supporting team members, such as art and audio, for example, circulate on and off projects as needed, the core team has been working on it for some five years now, so the excitement is certainly palpable. It is also currently the most pre-ordered Total War game ever. That is massive. That is massive. So, uh, so we are incredibly glad that excitement and the support for what we're doing is building up in the outside world too. Of course, it's not just a new major release for our series, it's also the first game set in China. A daunting undertaking for a UK studio, and striving to do the source material justice in a small way we... <clears throat> excuse me, we can, has been a significant challenge. However, such a uniquely interesting and vibrant period is easy to fall in love with. While we wanted to create a game that was very much our own tribute to the romance of the Three Kingdoms, we have taken an incredible amount on board throughout the process. Our endless thanks to our fans across the world, in particular in China, for their help and guidance on what we have shown in the run-up to launch. We'll be keeping a very close eye on how the game is received, and we will adjust any important details if needed as people to get to grips with them. And I really believe this, um, so much so, the fact they delayed the launch. Um, just to just to iron out things that people had issue with is is incredible. Also, um, yeah, the, saying also China, where was it? Uh, in particular, in China, yeah, yeah, that that probably explains the um, uh, the sales, the the sales for most pre-ordered game ever. It's for sale in China, isn't it? So that is a big audience, and this isn't something that you know. The Romance of Three Kingdoms. There was a there was a game based on it, but it came out years and years ago. This is the first, like, modern game to really uh, delve into this. I'm sure there's, like, Dynasty Warriors and stuff, but that series has just gone off the rails, as far as I can tell, um, before I heard about it. Never played it myself, but anyway. So, uh, this is a big deal, I imagine, in China. So, um, additional content. As any long-term player knows, we have a reputation for supporting our games post-launch with updates, free content, and DLC. Yeah, a lot of all of those, in fact. Uh, we're planning for Total War Three Kingdoms to be no different, with a dedicated DLC team having wrapped up the Yellow Turbans, early adopter bonus, and already hard at work on post-launch support. In fact, they have been for some months now, learning from the years of experience we have in creating additional content and planning and integrating their designs with the main game. We're taking a slightly different approach to the DLC for Total War Three Kingdoms, based both on the exciting opportunities the Romance of the Three Kingdoms source material offers, um, offers us, and the preference we know players have for larger DLCs, which adds considerable new replay. Yeah, this was definitely something they learned from Warhammer. Um, the big DLCs are just incredible, people love them, and, um, yeah, I think that's the reason why the game is lasting as long as it is, you know, people are still super, super keen um, on that. And a lot of it is because the new content is, it's worth people's time, and uh, I really hope they do the same with 3K, it certainly seems like that's what they're after. So, what you'll see initially for Total War Three Kingdoms DLC are what we call chapter packs. So, new terminology here. Let's find out what it is. We'll be taking notable uh, chapters from Romance uh, of the Three Kingdoms and creating new start positions that reflect their events, adding a cast of new and familiar characters, features, and objectives each time that exemplify the chapter and the thrilling stories it tells. So, I really like that. They're, they're literally just delving into different chapters and setting the scene for each one to go, okay, this is how China looked at the start of this chapter. Let's, let's do that. Um, which is interesting. It's definitely interesting because it does span a long time um, as far as I'm aware. So a lot of changes happen. So while you'll find a selection of new heroes and villains populating each new chapter, you'll also see some familiar faces from the main game. I imagine uh, Tao Tao is in going to be quite a lot of them. He seems the uh, he seems a long-lasting one. I haven't read the book, sadly, or watched the TV show. That's something I really need to get onto because I really want to. I really want to know more about all this. 
Um, I'm kind of in love with this game now, you might have noticed. So, uh, however, they'll be at a different point in their life, and are likely to have a very different set of needs and desires at this stage in their journey. I'd imagine so. In terms of size of content, you can expect a chapter pack to be somewhere between a culture pack and a campaign pack. So, I imagine... Um... It's been a while since I've really looked at either of those DLCs for previous games, for other historical games, but the culture packs were basically, here's some new units, and the campaign packs were like, here's a new map. But of course it won't be a new map, it'll be the same map, but with different starting locations for everybody, right? So we'll probably see some new toys, but also new ways to play the game, you know, new, new sort of, um, new terrain to fight over, really. It's going to be, um gonna mix it up that way I guess so it could be interesting to see how it plays out um, I want to see what other surprises they'll have for us because they inevitably always do um, they really like to throw in some other little quirks so I can't wait to see what they do with it uh, there'll be a serious clutch of new playable factions and a raft of new mechanics to get to grips with in each there are those new toys uh, while you'll be playing across all of China our hope is that eventually, when you start a fresh campaign, you'll get to decide where in the epic tale of the Three Kingdoms you want to dive in, picking from a range of exciting scenarios and challenges that reflect some of the most remarkable legends ever told. That does sound pretty great. I really do like the sound of that. So, updates. Thanks to our publishers and your support. Thanks, Uncle Sonic. Uh, we were able to delay the game for a couple of months to add a further level of polish and incorporate even more feedback, like unit card changes and extreme unit sizes, for example. Extreme unit sizes, I'm loving. It's pretty nuts. Um, I've got to say, though, there's actually a big difficulty curve involved there. I find um, your characters just do so much better if you're on the default large setting. As soon as you go to extreme unit sizes, it's a lot harder. It's a lot harder for the characters, uh, which I kind of like. It means a sort of romance mode. I'll still get hundreds and hundreds of kills, but um, they can't solo an entire army, which I actually quite like. It changes the balance a bit. Um, I know, unrelated to updates, but hey, that's a nice little nugget for you guys. And uh, the unit card changes, what I love about this is if you were a fan of the old unit card, they got a lot of flack, but I'm sure some people would prefer those, that you can turn them on, um, which is great in the settings, in the interface. Um, options. You can just turn on alternate unit cards and you can have the old ones um, or you can have the new ones they've designed. It doesn't matter. You can pick. So it's a lot of player choice which I think is wonderful that they've done that. They haven't thrown out, you know, they haven't thrown the baby out with the bathwater. They've kept the baby and you can use it if you like. That was a weird metaphor. That is weird. I have no idea how that happened. Anyway, uh, right now we're in a great place with the game and really, really happy with its playability and stability. Of course, we know uh, that no matter what we might think, as soon as the game launches and millions of people start playing, there's going to be some things we need to act on fast. Yeah, always. That's game development, guys. That's game development. But, for me personally, it's, it's the most stable Total War game I've ever played. It's crazy. It is crazy slick. Um, kudos to all of them. Uh, to that end, alongside the DLC team, we'll have additional support from the core team aiming to address any urgent updates from launch. So if you have any issues with the game at launch, best place to go is the uh, support forum. If you have any bugs to report or feedback to offer, this is the best place to go. So um, yeah, guys, do this. Do, do get involved with this stuff if you run into problems because other people are probably having those problems too. So if you speak up about it, it's a lot easier for them to just, you know, chime in and go, oh yeah, and me, I have that too. Um, you know, people have forgotten, whatever, it lets them prioritize what they need to fix, and so it can it can really help your experience out, because, uh, yeah, they'll fix stuff, but they need to know it's a problem first, so be sure to, be sure to let them know. Uh, modding, always a pleasure. Uh, mods are so fun, they really expand the lifespan of a game pretty brilliantly. So we're pleased to say that we'll be releasing an assembly kit for Total War Three Kingdoms shortly after launch. The game's data structure opens up a raft of new modding opportunities, which, coupled with updated tools, has been exciting. Um, the beta test group of modders we've been looking at in um, that we've had a looking at the game and the kit already. Very cool to see that they are even getting the tools in people's hands so they can. Uh, they can help iron things out, which is very cool. So, we won't be releasing the assembly kit or turning on the workshop at launch, as we found that players report bugs caused by mods, and that can hamper our initial patching response. But stand by for more news very soon. That is kind of sad. I was uh, I was actually wondering um, this morning, in fact. I was wondering if there'd be any launch day mods, because there was for Total War Warhammer. Um, but I totally get it. 
they want to iron this game out as well as they can and that is going to cause problems but it does mean that if there are already some people testing out the you know the kit then hell as soon as this goes live we might see a bunch of really interesting mods because those modders have more time to play about with those things which i think is great um it could be really interesting to see what happens um when when it is released but i get it i totally get it i prefer i prefer if the vanilla experience was as good as it can be um, before they started throwing that stuff out there, because that's the thing. Day one mods aren't really necessary, um, certainly not for me. I always play through the game uh, once or twice before ever turning on a mod. Um, because, you know, I want to play it as intended, right? And mods tend to mess things up a bit. So I always play vanilla. So I, you know, I get it, and I'm happy with that, to be honest. So, preload. So this is the exciting bit for you guys. Well, I mean, it's all quite exciting, but this is the sort of eminent excitement. So, last but not least, preload starts from 6pm BST on Monday the 20th of May. If you've pre-ordered, you can start downloading the game files from then, but don't forget the game will only unlock at launch, which is 8am BST, Thursday the 23rd of May. So, uh, if you guys were wondering, that's past. We're done. That's already happened. That's already happened, guys. Uh, if you haven't got it downloading already, um, if you're one of the more people who've ever pre-ordered a Total War game, before this one. Yeah, you can get it. You can get it. Uh, you can get it downloading now, so you don't have to, you know, download it once it releases and miss out on uh, getting into the game straight away. So, I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, yeah, I've been enjoying the hell out of the game, and obviously if you have any questions about the game or anything, um, yeah, yeah, comment section for you. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions about uh, what the game's like now. Um, because obviously I've had hands-on experience with it. You might have noticed the Let's Plays and things. So, uh, yeah, feel free to ask him questions. So, guys, that'll be it for this, um, what, this news article? Video thing? I don't know what to call it. Whatever. News. Hope you enjoyed the news. So, guys, if you enjoyed this, please do comment, like, and subscribe. And uh, be sure to tune in for more Three Kingdoms content. Have a good day, guys.